It's 2004 Toronto. A young man and his older mentally ill 20-something-year-old friends are living the dream life. They have their own band, one of them is dating a high schooler, and they don't gotta listen to anyone or anything. Life is good. Except that they hate themselves on the inside and struggle with self-love literally to the point where they can alter reality to pretend everything is fine. <laughs> yeah, I can see why this story is popular. Scott Pilgrim objectively is a hallmark to what the early 2000s and late 90s media looked like and what adults now probably remember what their past was like. When I read this comic, I feel a sense of rebellion and randomness only recreated during this era. From the music, the sports, the cliques, the social hierarchies, yeah, this time in history was pretty superficial. Everyone was trying their hardest to stick out, but at the same time trying their hardest to fit in. I, I don't know, it's weird. I, I, don't, I don't get it. I used to dream of a life like Pilgrim's every day until I actually got as old as Scott and I realized... So that was a fucking lie. Okay, yeah, sure, you have your bubble of safety and ignorance, but when that bubble of safety finally pops, yeah, all that shit is gonna hurt. Or even worse, you stay in that bubble and you become jaded and indifferent from the feelings of others. At worst, you end up dying alone. But hey, you had a fun life, right? You enjoyed yourself, right? Right? Now, I love this story for two reasons. These are the only things I look out for specifically for seeing if the story is my thing. Now, doing either or isn't that difficult, but doing both at the same time, damn near impossible. I want to enjoy something lighthearted that doesn't take itself too seriously, but it can still get me feeling that 3 a.m. existential dread with the flick of a switch. And there's not a lot of media that can balance these two in one story. Believe me, I've checked. But Scott Pilgrim is weirdly the perfect blend of seriousness and fun. It had hilarious scenarios of character dialogue riddled with darker and more serious themes of the human condition. Let's take this scene where Scott has to find a way to avoid his ex. The 17 year old, the beginning, remember? The child. Oh, hey, knives. What's that? You're outside? Hi, Scott here. Uh, you know what? He just left. Really? Yeah. Sorry. How can you not at least grin at this guy's antics? He's charming, hilarious, and a downright man-child, and I love seeing him do anything. But <laughs> he's also a narcissist, and a leech, and an asshole, and a two-timing fuckboy, and he has this condition of never remembering his past mistakes, and just how much his mess-ups hurt the people around him. Broke up with her. And was she cool with that? She's totally cool with it. I'm sure about that. Yeah, she's very mature for her age. We had a very healthy breakup. We're all peaches and gravy. False memory is an apparent recollection of an event that actually didn't occur. Throughout the story, we have recounts of Scott's old memories from Scott's brain. Later on in the story, we see the objective events that happened from a third party, and they are so different. Sometimes I question if Scott is sociopathic. Fine, I had to fight a guy to be with her, okay? And I had to fight 96 guys to get to him. He was flying and shooting lightning bolts from his eyes, okay? And I kicked him so hard that he saw the curvature of the earth. As humans, we fear pain. And a way to remove that pain from the past events is to distort exactly our role we had to play in the events preceding the painful moment. And if you've read these comics and thought, wow, Scott is actually a really shitty person, You'd be correct. In the span of five volumes, this guy Brian Lee O'Malley shows the onslaught of hurt people Scott trods and steps on in order to continue living this fake reality where he's done nothing wrong. Hopping from one girl to the next, trying to rekindle old flames, mind you, some he broke up in the worst ways possible, but hey, anything to avoid your problems, right? Oh, and by the way, it's not just Scott. This story is full of people rebounding off each other. Exes dating exes of exes. It's a huge exes cesspool. And you're just like them. We've all had our moments of self-victimization over an event we remember we did nothing wrong, where it was all the other party's fault, where it was us versus the world. <laughs> this is the genius of Brian Lee O'Malley's Scott Pilgrim. All of his characters are flawed. Very flawed. Like, I don't know who is worse, Scott or Ramona. I mean, at least Ramona is smart enough to pack her bags to leave when she completely destroys people's souls. Scott just stays there and gaslights them to thinking that everything might have not been as bad as they remember. That time with Lisa? That was a misunderstanding. That time with Holly? That wasn't what it looked like. That time you dumped Kim? Okay, or... me and Kim are all good now, all right? And the reason why these characters are so well written and real is because they are real. 
Brian has gone on record to say that a lot of the stories and experiences the characters go through are based on actual events of him and his friends growing up. You know, which led to some really uncomfortable premiere screenings when he was showing off the book and the movie. Writing what you know is not a revolutionary technique, but never have I known people actually lose friends because of it. Brian did live in Toronto, he did have a gay roommate and a band he was playing in. You know, and this is tough because his friends hated seeing themselves in the story. But ironically, Brian had made Scott Program the way it is because of them. After making his previous comic Lost in Sea, he showed his homies for a review and they said it made them uncomfortable due to its heavy nature and topics. So he decided to make a story that they could laugh at and be happy while reading. Obviously we don't know how loose the adaptations of certain characters or conversations were but losing friends over something that was meant to make them happier, that's kind of tragic. And the more I researched about Brian, the more I started to fall in love with Scott Pilgrim all over again. Brian doesn't even love all the fame, he just wants to chill at home and make things that he wants to make. He's even said he's constantly trying to find a way to bridge the worlds of emotion and fun. He is literally me, that is exactly what I said at the beginning of this video. In small bursts, and I mean small bursts, I started to read in between the lines of the character's dialogue and felt way more in tune to what they were feeling. The wanting for a simple life, the love of music, the desperate desire to feel love, trying to push away the past. This story is great. Because once again, they delve into all this, but still have their comical goofy fight scenes, character designs and one-liners that make me sit back in my chair and just say, huh, I'm really enjoying this. This stupid facade everyone puts in their late teens and early 20s pretending like they have everything together. It's so crystal clear to see from the story, but impossible to see in our own lives. Because that's what youth is is this dumb cycle of history repeating itself until you finally say fuck it things will be different this time i'm going to try and make things right i'm tired of pretending things are okay let it be a digimon music monster or a pretentious four-eyed egomaniac i know what i want and i'm not laying over to the side pretending like i don't anymore this story is a perfect example of the madness of youth the betrayals the responsibilities the fun the nostalgia, the rebellious energy. All ugly to look at by itself. But taking a step back on that period in life, you realize it's the most twisted, beautiful time you'll ever have the pleasure of experiencing. Oh no!